So Cardi B is fed up with some of the things that she is hearing about her career. Now she went on to Instagram Live to set the record straight. There's a lot of music commenters they like to talk shit about females. They like to talk shit, period, about commenting and y'all start talking shit. Y'all should really make y'all research on artists that y'all talking shit about. And um, I want to make this very clear. I'm a self-made bitch. I'm a super self-made bitch. I made myself. Before a TV show made me, I made myself. And also, I really want to thank anybody that do their research on me and stand up for me because a lot of people don't be standing up for me. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of, it's real popular to talk shit about Cardi and I want to thank this girl named Damaris because she be standing up for me like crazy and like she be speaking for me and like when a man stand up for you, that's great but when a female stand up for me, that, that means the world to me. So I want to make, I want to give you a little bit of her story, all right? I want to give y'all, I'm a, I want to rewind it because I feel like my success impact y'all so fast that I don't think that y'all was with me in the 2014s, 2015s and everything. And let me tell you how Cardi B got started, right? Before I was on Love & Hip Hop, I had 2 million followers, right? 2 million followers, mind you, my page got deleted about three or four times because, you know, I used to pop heavy out of my mouth. I used to talk crazy out of my mouth. Um, I started doing videos because um, I broke up with a guy that really broke my heart. Um, I was going through it. I had like this anger towards men because, you know, I was a stripper. I was going through some shit and I was just fed up. So I used to go on my social media and I used to talk shit. And out of nowhere, people just started following me, following me, following me. I built the following. I had all y'all male rappers. I had all the male rappers following me. Um, I had all the influencers, the female influencers following me. Bitches started calling themselves hoes and all that. I even had Kardashians following me, bitch. I had Kardashians following me. Chris Rock used to hit me up talking about he want to make a movie for, about, about my life and everything. So, boom. Then... I got on Love and Hip Hop, and who got me on Love and Hip Hop was my old manager. And my old manager, he was he's not no, he wasn't no industry nigga. He ain't no industry nigga. He he wasn't in the music industry, none of that shit. He used to manage DJ Self. He was a regular nigga from Queens. I told him I want to get on Love and Hip Hop. Um, it was hard for me to get on Love and Hip Hop. But you know, we made a storyline with DJ Self, and boom, we got in there. Before Love and Hip Hop premiere, I was working on music. Um, my manager at the time, he said that like, yo, every single time you get in the car, you remix things really fast. You should, you should consider doing music. I really was not with it at first because it's like I was like a little shy. And then he took me to a studio. He played, he put me a beat. He's like, write to this shit. I wrote to it. I made strip a hole. And I made, I need all my money makers, bring that cash out. I bring all my money in there, bring that cash out. He's like, we got to shoot a video right now for it. I'm like, all right, whatever. Before Love & Hip Hop premiere, before Love & Hip Hop premiere, I want to get emotional. My manager at the time told me, you need to quit stripping before this show airs out. And I told him, I don't want to tell the world that I'm going to quit stripping. Because if Love & Hip Hop don't work for me, and these things don't work for me, I'm going to go back to the strip club because there was girls that were strippers and um, went on Love & Hip Hop and they said, like, you know, I'm going to... They, they ended up going back to the strip club and, and the bitches in the strip clubs were making fun of them. I didn't want it to be that. But he was like, you know what? You got to believe in yourself. So I bet it on myself. And I think on my 23rd birthday, I said, this will be the last day that I strip. And I told the world that this will be the last day that I strip. All right, boom. Love and Hip Hop is out. And I use Love and Hip Hop as an engine to showcase, like, you know, I'm an artist and everything. Because people didn't, people didn't really know that I was doing music because, you know, I was funny. But they didn't really know that I was doing music. So I'm showcasing that I'm an artist and this is what I want to do and all that bullshit. All right, boom. So Love and Hip Hop premieres. I have a song 
and people are listening to it. It's, it's charting on this random ass chart on Billboard, whatever the fuck. We go to a label and they told me that they wanted to sign me for $50,000. They wanted to sign me for $50,000 and they have to finish watching because Love and Hip Hop was playing, but like the, it was like Love and Hip Hop hasn't finished the first season. So there was that. And we have to see um we have to see your actions on love and hip-hop because if you too like ratchet or if you're doing too much we can't sign you so um my manager at the time told me like now nah, we we're not gonna sign you for no fifty thousand dollars because they're already offering you a hundred thousand for season two of love and hip-hop for your second season we're not gonna like they're not gonna shortbread you I right. so um we keep going to these labels and we keep showing them that people keep listening to the stripper hole song and then we put forever ran down on that bitch twice and we putting the mixtape out it does good in numbers but it's not good enough to get me signed so then i finally feel like i'm about to catch my break there's this fire ass song that came out in new york it's called wait 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 a minute Wait, wait, wait a minute. They hit me up that they wanted me to be on the remix with Remy Ma and 50 Cent. And let me tell y'all something. I didn't even, this is why I fuck with Remy because I don't really know Remy like that. And when that song came out, I definitely didn't know her at all. At all. I haven't seen her. And I keep hearing that she wanted me to be on that remix with her and everything. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to be my big break. Everybody going to hear my voice finally, finally. So the guy that the song was, the manager at the time, they said that the remix was too long, so they had to take me out of the remix. And I was so heartbroken because I felt like that was going to be my chance. That was going to be my chance for real, but they had to take me out of it, whatever. So my mixtape is out at the time. My mixtape is out at the time, and I'm doing party hostings for fifteen to $20,000. So... Well, me and my manager put together because a lot of these labels, they felt like, I, right, yes, she's popular, but is she only popular because she's funny and she's on Love and Hip Hop and her social media? Are people are really listening to her music? Like, yeah, there's numbers on her music and everything, but is this shit really real? So for us to show them that it's really real, the parties that I, these promoters that was booking me to do parties, we told them, hey, listen. Instead of y'all booking us to to host y'all parties, why don't y'all book performance venue so I could have mini concerts, so I could have mini concerts, so I could promote my show, and we call it the underestimated tour. So the money that I they were paying me instead of hosting, we took it to do a tour so we could record it and film it people listening to my music and rapping my songs so we had a couple of openers we had cash flow harlem we had swift on the man we have josh x and we had her celebrity opening up for me with the 15 and twenty thousand dollars that i was getting paid to do these shows that money i was paying for them to get hotel rooms to get transportation to get everything but i wanted this tour to look super legit so we went to Washington, we went to Connecticut, we went to Philly, we went to San Francisco, we went to LA, we was going everywhere and I was performing my whole mixtape and there was so many people coming out. It was like 900 people, some places had 500 people, some places had 2,000 people coming out and we put that all together and let me tell you something, when we put that all together, a couple of months ago, they wanted to sign me for 50000 right? In a span of like eight to nine months, when we put all of that together and we showed the labels that this shit was real, that we was going to every state and everybody was rapping my music, talking about ran down on that bitch twice. I pull up, like, what's up? Everything on fleek. They saw that and they saw that shit's not a gimmick. This ain't no social media shit. From state to state, people was rapping my fucking mixtapes. So I went from people was, motherfuckers was trying to sign me for 50000 Then it went to 500000 And then boom, Atlantic signed me for, I think, $1.2 million. All right, whatever. Now I'm signed to Atlantic. And I feel, and I feel like, oh, as soon as I sign to Atlantic, things are going to like go crazy for me. 
I had to hustle again. Atlantic was trying to get some of the artists on their label to do a feature with me. Guess what? Nobody wanted to do a feature with me. Nobody. Niggas was like, oh, niggas was like, oh, um, yeah, let me let me get her number. And I was like, nah, don't give niggas my personal numbers. Because I was already a strip. You know, I, I've been a stripper. So I feel like if 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 somebody asked you, like, hey, would you do a song with Cardi, but you want my direct number, I feel like you trying to fuck me. And I was not with it. Um, I met my husband. I talked to him. I showed him my music and everything. He loved it. And he was the first person in the industry to do a feature with me. My husband, he believed in me from the beginning, from the beginning. And you know, I just kept telling him like, I don't understand. I feel like I'm hustling, I'm hustling. Like I'm putting out music, all of this shit. Like I keep going state to state, showing DJs my music. I don't understand like blah, blah, blah. blah. Months later, months later, I did Bodak Yellow and Bodak Yellow just changed my life. Bodak Yellow just changed my life. It just changed my life. But it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen because I was on Love & Hip Hop. It didn't happen as soon as I got signed to a label. I worked for this shit. 